So, um, at this point I would normally introduce myself and say that I'm a technologies advisor working for education. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I won't do that in, uh, in this particular instance. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pretend uh, that I, I'm a geography teacher, which I was uh, seconded, from, uh, seconded from East Lothian Council to work at the moment with, uh, with Education Scotland. And um, what I thought I'd talk about is um, the seven things you maybe didn't know about uh, Wikipedia, apart from it being obviously very, very small. Um, so, uh, where this came about to start with is um, a couple of years ago I did a presentation on social media in schools. I wrote an article about why should schools use Wikipedia. Uh, and it was quite well received. In fact, it was so well received that for once the TES wrote something positive about me. All right? And in their article, uh, they talked about that actually Wikipedia could be quite good for pupils because what I was trying to argue is that we shouldn't ban Wikipedia, we should help young people use it responsibly. Uh, unfortunately, um, despite this article being incredibly good, uh, one of the things that happened is another internet site picked up on the article uh, and it made the comment that um, Scottish teacher um, encourages pupils to use unreliable Wikipedia. Uh, and then this was picked up by my local paper, the East Lothian Courier, some of you might have heard, might have heard of it, um, which said school web controversy, deputy head teacher encourages pupils to use unreliable source. And this actually takes me to my very, very first point about Wikipedia really, and that is that uh, Wikipedia is actually pretty accurate. Um, and in fact, um, in fact, it's more accurate than East Lothian Courier, for one thing. Uh, and secondly, um, if we're interested in research about this sort of stuff, the University of Colorado has done some fairly robust academic research, which is comparing Wikipedia to other um, paper-based online encyclopedias to look at the accuracy um, of some of the different, different articles. Um, and of course, the other really interesting thing I think about Wikipedia is that it tells you that it's inaccurate. Um, because actually littered all over Wikipedia pages, you get these kind of you know, orange boxes, don't you, like this, which says things like, this article uh, needs verification, or this article needs like an advertisement. And of course, you don't normally get that in a normal encyclopedia, but one of the biggest challenges we have, I think, in terms of de teaching digital literacy to children is not teach them not to use Wikipedia, but teach them to understand what some of these terms mean. Because for some children, you know, words like verification and contradicts and accuracy, and even words like factual, are quite hard to understand. So yes, <coughs> if children are going to use this resource, let's help them use it responsibly, because this needs to be an important part of the digital literacy agenda. Now, one of the reasons why um, Wikipedia is actually um, fairly accurate is because it's pretty up to date. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for this, really, is that if you go to any school library in Scotland, or pretty much any school library in Scotland, I can guarantee that you will not find the 2011 edition of Britannica there, right? Simply because it's far too expensive, and also because now we've got a culture, actually, in a lot of schools, where a young person comes into the library and says, I want to look up a fact, and they say, well, go and use the internet, rather than going go to use the, uh, you know, the actual um, digital encyclopedia to, to start with. Uh, and in fact, Wikipedia is incredibly accurate. Um, this is an article here. You know, some of you will be familiar with it. It was the, uh, the, the Turkish earthquake that's just occurred. And it's currently being pieced together by experts from all around the world. Incredibly accurate source of information, which hasn't yet uh, made the printed press or a printed encyclopedia. Um, and of course, the other way that we consume information now is we want to consume information where we are. And there's some actually wonderful, nice mashup apps that we can get now for devices like the iPhone and devices like the Android phone, which means that actually I can hold up my phone and I can view Wikipedia and Encyclopedia articles actually over the layer of where I am completely. Because now we've come from a culture of young people wanting to consume information at any time and any place, uh, which is why so many of them have got these internet-enabled phones. Um, the other important thing I think is important to know about Wikipedia is that it's got tabs. It's not just an encyclopedia. Uh, this is the article here for Edinburgh, and uh, you know, you'll be familiar with the, with the look of Wikipedia, I'm, insure, I'm, I'm sure. And along the top of the tabs, we've got the article there, and that's obviously how we can understand the article. But if I scroll along, I've actually really got an interesting discussion tab. And this is where there are people from all around the world that are having a discussion about this article, you know, about its accuracy, and they're analysing it to see whether it's accurate or not. This is what I would call the analysing tab. And if I progress a little bit further along, I can actually see the revision history. But I can see how many times that article has actually been revised. And I'd make the assumption that if an article has been revised 10,000 times, that's likely to be more accurate than an article that's been revised one, once or twice. Again, an important digital literacy message for children in terms of verified online sources. I'd call that the evaluating tab. And of course, the interesting thing about Wikipedia is anybody can edit it. So people that complain it's not very accurate, if you know it's not very accurate, why don't you get on there and edit and update it yourself, <laughs> right, and actually contribute to this wonderful body of knowledge. And I'd call that kind of the kind of creating tab. And it's a really interesting thing, isn't it? Because it doesn't take very long to see where I'm going with this. That if we actually think about you know, the development of higher order thinking, right, and if we think about some of the skills, and we think about where Wikipedia might fit in, you know, it can actually be used very, very successfully, like most digital tools, right, to develop some of these higher order skills. 
The other thing about Wikipedia, it's available in lots of languages. Um, in fact, it's available in 282 different languages. Not all of it, but most of it is. Um, this is the article for Scotland. Interestingly, um, there's also a Gaelic article there. There's you know, just over 8,500 articles in Gaelic, which is why I always find it surprising that people say there's no Gaelic content on the web. Um, there's 7,500 articles to do with Scots as well. But the really interesting thing from the school's point of view, I think, is that, first of all, this is interesting, that there's over 150 translated articles about gold, the most translated article you know, across the globe and across the internet. Um, but also, as well, we've also got this plain English version as well. Right, for children that are perhaps learning English or coming to terms with English, or perhaps younger children um, in, 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 the, in the primary school. Um, other criticism of Wikipedia is how easy it is to reference. Um, and of course, actually, Wikipedia is incredibly easy to reference, because if you look down the left-hand column, not that anybody does, but I advise you to go on there and have a good look around, there's a little button there which is called Citation. And if you click on that Citation button, it will reference it for you. Right, in an appropriate way, right, for a number of different, um, you know, different recognised methods that, 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 that are all there. Um, but of course, again, it's a digital literacy message, isn't it? Because you know, people say or people complain that young people are, 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 are copying and pasting out Wikipedia. But actually, the question is really, you know, should we really be encouraging young people you know, to reference an encyclopedia in the first place? Probably not, because it's a third party, third party source. And actually, what they should be referencing is they should actually be referencing probably you know, some of the sources from the articles <coughs> as well. Uh, and the last couple of things, just very, very quickly, is, um, I don't know if you know this, but you can make a book out of Wikipedia. It's really, really easy to do. Um, just underneath the citation button on the left-hand side there, there's a little button that says make a book. All right? And you click on that button, which says make a book, uh, and that brings up the book generator. I don't know if you can see it there across the top there. And then every time you visit a Wikipedia page, you can add that page to your book. Right? So I made one here to do with geography revision, which I've included coasts and rivers and glaciers in it. And then once I've finished that, I can export it as a PDF, or I can export it as an open doc, so I can read it on a Kindle, or I can read it on an iPad, or something like that. Um, and I can export it, and it kind of, you know, it's fairly simple, but it kind of looks quite nice, really. And it only took me a couple of minutes to make, and a couple of searches to sort of find in. And I think it's you know, probably quite appropriate and probably quite useful. And I think the last thing that we should all know about Wikipedia is it's got some sisters. They call it sister sites, because Wikipedia is owned by the Wikimedia Foundation. There's a Wikimedia Foundation UK. Um, and actually, Wikimedia's got loads of projects. And a lot of these projects, I think, are really, really interesting for education, right? including lots of pictures that we can use for educational value and lots of sounds that we can use as well in podcasts and to help engage children. Whole ways of different classifying animals, you know, all available for free that we can use for education. And I would really kind of encourage you to have a little look at that. Thanks very much.